All right, we have a request for winter 19, test four, part four. Question seven, that did not show up on the copy. Question seven. Oh, that's not it. And you will have a page just like this with this many points exactly. Now, if you look at previous videos, I'm, I'm going to assume you've watched them. Um, to get the major product involved three questions being answered. Question one, formation of which HX is fastest? Is it HCL or HBR? The answer, at negative 438 kilojoules per mole, this bond forms a lot faster than negative 368 kilojoules per mole. Cross off every box with HBR. HBR forms much slower than HCl. That's the reason. All right, now I want the product that results from the most stable carbon radical. Or I can word it another way where you can use the table to figure out which radical is the most stable. The CH bond that's the easiest to break breaks first. Tertiary CH breaks first. There's products from the primary CH and another product from the secondary CH. Let's do some research, shall we? And get a number for each one and figure out why this one is going to happen faster. So we got to go to our exam, which I had open here, and we got Zoom stuff's in the way. I can't get to it. My picture is part of that Zoom stuff. Uh, there we go. And uh, the first page of this exam is our BDE table sideways. The numbers that are relevant are tertiary, 389, secondary, 402. I can only do two numbers at a time anymore. Plus 389, plus 402, cross it off. Not, not gonna happen before uh, 389, is gonna happen before uh, 402. Is it 389? Did I remember that right? Oh, yeah, tertiary 402. Primary is 418 since I'm here. Uh, plus 418. You're crossing off the ones that aren't going to break first. 402 is not going to break before 389. 418 is not going to break before 389. We have a winner and we have the right products here because of that winner. The products that put the BR on the tertiary carbon are major. There you go. And that was a lot of work for one point. I do want to remind you that if you got the one point wrong, it doesn't mean you're ruined for the rest of this question. I'm just going to follow through your choice of product and see if you do the right mechanism for your choice of product. If you use the right delta H's for your choice of the product. So you, you won't be losing many more points. I need the initiation and two propagation steps. I need the mechanism. Prop one in this very important reaction breaks the halogen halogen bond. BRCL breaks in half. No hooks, no points. I say that every semester. I still have students just give me the result without the hooks and they get nothing. I'm getting a lot extra. Okay, so no hooks, no points. Okay, that's prop one. That's not prop one, that's initiation. Thank you for, yeah, I need my editors listening. That's it, nothing one, that's a knit, a knit. Gets the game started by breaking the weakest bond. What caused that was the heat. I don't need the heat for sure. I don't need it, but that's what made it happen. Now, which halogen is going to grab the H in prop two? You got to make a choice based on your decision earlier. 
Here's your decision earlier. Make sure your mechanism gives me those results. H is grabbed by CL. So CL dot is the only one you're going to use. Prop one. CL dot that you just made takes the H that you know must be taken. I know, I flipped the molecule again. I'm driving you guys crazy. No hooks, no points. You need the hooks. Those are making a bond from H to CL. That's those two hooks. And the third hook, the uh, remaining electron in the bond goes to the nice tertiary carbon. Congratulations, you made HCl. That's one of your products. And you made a very important tertiary carbon radical. That's prop one. Prop two finishes the thing off. Prop two. Carbon radical that you just made. Yeah, I'll put the hook. Ah, sorry. I'll put the dot outside there. I want it to look like the one I just did. Uh, that's going to react with BrCl to make Cl dot. You need to make Cl dot so that prop one can happen for the second time. And your other product. The one you circled up there, no hooks, no points. Hope these hooks look the same in these consecutive steps here. They do. You make a bond by meeting hooks. Make a bond here by meeting hooks. The other atom gets a radical. The other atom gets a radical. They're the same. Same hooks in both prop steps. Excellent. Five more points. We're flying. So in each prop step, you break one bond and make another. Which one's endothermic? Breaking or making? Breaking bonds requires heat. Bonds hold things together. Making generates heat. Exothermic, making. The electrons get more stable when you make a bond. To break bonds, I mean, how do I break this eraser off this pencil? Do I let it just sit there and happen on its own? Is it going to happen ever? No, it's bonded to this pencil. To get that off of there, I got to pull it off. I put in energy. All right. Now you got to use your imagination and pretend that these are magnets. <laughs> and if I put these magnets close to each other, the they're going to remake that bond, right? That's, that's, the, that's the one that happens on its own, but they're not magnets. I didn't bring magnets today. I didn't know I wanted to do this demo. Okay. That would have been a perfect demo, by the way. Just two magnets. Here they are sitting together. They're being held by a bond. How do you get them apart? You put energy in. Now, if you, put, if you just put those magnets like real close to each other without touching them, they'll come together on their own. So... Breaking needed me to put them in, the energy in. You gotta remember that or else you're, you're done in this question if you don't remember breaking bonds is endothermic and making is exothermic. You're done. You're not gonna get anything right. So how much energy did you have to put in to break this bond? It's on the screen. It's already on the screen. Plus 389. I didn't look it up, but I've done it so many times. I memorized the HCl one. It's on the handout. It's given to you, test day, negative 431. I didn't memorize BrCl, and I didn't memorize tertiary carbon to Br. We're going to get those numbers right now. BrCl and tertiary carbon to bromine. BrCl is right here, the LBR, plus 219. 219, I'm going to write it down. I got nothing to write it down. Yeah. I broke the pencil. No, I didn't. Plus 219, 
Tertiary carbon to BR. Don't pick this one. Don't pick it. It's tertiary, but it's allylic. Pick this one. Tertiary, not allylic. Tertiary because CS3Cs. Negative 284. Negative 284. Why did I say negative 284, not positive 284? It's exothermic when you make a bond. Endothermic when you break a bond. Delta HP1 equals plus 389 minus 431. I don't know how to do that. So I take the big minus the small and reverse my signs. When I'm done, two, two become, three becomes two, four. That's a negative four, two. And if no units, you lose a point. Just one for the whole part. So my final answer needs to have units. What are they? Yes. Yes. Okay, and just do the same thing here. I'm a delta HP2 numbers as they're written. There's no memorizing of equations here. Numbers as they are written on the screen. And I got to do the same exercise. 284 is the bigger one, minus 219, but that's the wrong sign. And that's 4 minus 9 is a 5. That's a 7 minus a 1 is a 6. That's a negative 65. Don't forget units. Delta H R X N. Negative 107. I may forgive you for not showing your work there. Those numbers are pretty easy to add, aren't they? But, you know, why take any chances? Negative 42 plus negative 65. There you go. Negative 107. There is no allylic when there's no double bond. There's no allylic when there's no double bond. The question was, is it allylic? The answer is no. Allylic numbers are irrelevant in this question. There are no double bonds in these molecules. This would be allylic here, right here. If I put a double bond right there, now it's an allylic product, but that's a different question. So we're not talking allylic in this one. Okay. So yeah, you'll see about half the exams it's allylic and half the exams it's not. I'm not telling you which one yours is gonna be. Uh, what do we got? We got, uh, does the rate determining step? Oh, we didn't do, uh, what is the rate determining propagation step? Now, guys, you get one point out of four for just saying propagation step one is rate determined. You get one. And why did I even choose prop one? This is my answer for uh, D. And you better say that you're using delta H to estimate the speed of these reactions. And you better acknowledge that you can only do that if delta S is zero. You can't use Gibbs free energy and enthalpy only. No, oh, I'm talking and writing at the same time. When delta S is roughly zero, then delta G is roughly delta H. If you don't acknowledge that, then you're you're just memorizing words. Now you're, you're allowed to use delta H to predict the speed of the reaction. Okay, so the more negative one is faster, and the less, so the less exothermic prop one is less exothermic, right? Negative 42 is RDS. That's about as short as that answer could get. I don't think you can cut a single thing out of there. Maybe the word then and the word so. <laughs> That's about all you could cut out. So the. So you want to, the, the bare, bare minimum. I know it's not a great sentence. When delta S zero, delta G, delta H, uh, less exothermic, prop one is RDS. Okay. Don't try to cut out more words. You're cutting out points. Rate 
determining step. She asked, what does RDS stand for? Okay. So we're going to diagram a transition state mm -hmm. for an exothermic reaction. And then we're going to explain it too. Uh, oh, later early. E, the explains first. E. In an exothermic RDS, the energy, you better be talking to me about energy, of the TS is closer. I don't have this memorized. To the energy of the, I don't know if it's reactants or products. I, I'm not memorizing that. Whenever I do that, I memorize it wrong half the time. Okay, so I, I go like this, exothermic reaction. Here's, uh, I don't know on the computer it is. That should be reactants and products to the class. Is it also on the computer, though? <laughs> I'm talking to class right now, not, not you, Mr. Camera. Reactants, products, exothermic starts high, ends low for a potential energy diagram. Reactants, products, TS is closer to this hand. It's up here. TS is the highest energy. Reactants. Energy is closer to the transition state. This is called early. So closer to the energy of the reactant. So the TS resembles reactant. More than product. Then when you resemble the beginning more than the end, you say it is early so i need an early prop one because you already told me prop one's rds so f i need a square box with a telephone pole in the top right during prop one at the end you make hcl at the end, H is bonded to Cl, but in the beginning, H is bonded to carbon. So you better have H real close to carbon, real far from Cl. Because early on, the H is bonded to the carbon, not the Cl. And there's a transition state. Not bad. H is moving from one place to the other. I need the H somewhere in the middle. But it better be towards the reactant side, not the product. We're flying. Good point. Well, the CL is not transitioning. No, the, the H is transitioning away from carbon towards CL. In this this in this molecule this reaction the bromine's transitioning from being bonded to Cl to being bonded to carbon. So if it was a prop two, I need to see Br somewhere in the middle. But it's not prop two. It's prop one, as determined by when we figured out which one was the rate determining step. And in prop one, the H is the transitioning atom. And then G is to give a mechanism for two termination steps. Please make your life easy and pick the easiest two. In this reaction, you can pick these two. And you won't have to draw an organic molecule at all. Uh, if, if Cl dot rehooks up with Br dot, I shouldn't have chosen red. Uh, if Cl dot, remember, terminations are radicals meeting up. No hooks, no points. This is the one where I see no hooks a lot. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm talking too long. Without these hooks, you get zero point. Just bring the hooks together, you're done. And you get Burkle. And in G, H, sorry, describe why termination steps are harmful for formation of the major product. 
Here, here's my answer for H right beside it. Which propagation step requires BR radical or CL radical? Sorry, I take it back. Prop one requires CL radical as a reactant, and you've used it here instead. You killed prop one. That's an adequate answer for me. If you kill either propagation step, you shut this thing down. So just write down, kills prop one. And you want another one that's real easy? How about having a CL radical? Meet up with a second CL radical. Kills prop one even faster. Just write kills prop one. I'm sorry, how did what? Uh, it's at the top of the screen. Prop one and prop two add together to give this plus this gives this plus this. How can you kill? Oh, that's the easiest one. You want to do a third one? No, it's not asked for. It's not asked for. I'm only asked for two two termination steps, but if you want to kill prop one and prop two, a uh, separate page because it's not part of this answer. If you had the CL dot meet up with the carbon dot, It kills the prop step that requires chlorine and it kills the prop step that requires carbon radical. You get CL bonded to cyclohexane and you would write kills prop one and, and prop two. How about doing it this way? Kills prop one because you're using up the reactant that's needed for prop one. This kills prop two. So there's a double kill on that one. It's the worst way to make that product. But I gave you two prop steps that involve the least writing. There you go. And then H, Y termination steps are, we did it. We explained it over here. And then I, the, I is gonna, you copy I down from your memory. It's the same answer every time, that's why. Do you remember my answer that I gave you that I told you you can just copy down? I can even type it because it's the same every time. Ah, keep, we'll try to make it as short as possible. Radical concentration low by, how do you do it? Good. Uh, and controlling by keeping it small, right? So a good way to say controlling by keeping low is minimizing, right? Minimizing the amount of time that H nu, eh, I'm gonna be nu, is applied. Straight out of the notes, and I gotta change that to a symbol font. You'll see an N become a nu. Where are you, symbol font? Where'd you go? Where's my font? Oh. The biggest thing there. Symbol. No, I go to T and then go up. S Y. I see. I'm getting smart in my old age sometimes. Okay. And then, yeah. What do we got here? Make it nice. Make it bold. It's the same answer every time. Yeah. All right. Dave. Sure. Uh, yeah, stop our video. We got a request for nomenclature coming up.